Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein Saga and this time uh, we are going to Ostend the tournament 1907. It's again a huge tournament, 29 players, but this time we don't have, you know, uh, multiple stages of the tournament. This is just, you know, round robin tournament. So everybody plays with everybody. Now, who was playing in this tournament? We have a lot of great names. I would like to show you the final um, table just you know we start that but I would like to just show you that last time Rubinstein couldn't win the tournament but this time together with Ossi Bernstein they won 19 and a half points uh, then we had the Jacques Mises and Aaron Nimcovic also very strong players very interesting Jacques Mises could actually win this tournament he played the beautiful um, tournament however he lost to the outsiders I'm not sure what just happened over there, but Jacques Mises got the, the, the third place together with Aaron Nimcovic, who had a very, very stable and consistent tournament. However, he lost to uh, all three players from the, uh, from the top. So uh, we also have Richard Teichmann, um, Olgich Duras, uh, first one of the first tournaments of Savieli Tartakover, who was only 20 years old. We have a Spielmann, Blackburn, and so on. So a lot of great names. And here uh, actually Akiba Rubinstein won. And I would like to show you the game between Akiba Rubinstein, who was already, according to Chess Metric, considered as one of the strongest players in the world. Number seven by ranking. 2711 and also Aaron Nimzovich who was uh, very young at that time uh, only I think he was 21 years old uh, his ranking according to chess metrics 2533 uh, Aaron Nimzovich gonna play as white and Akiba Rubinstein as black so without further ado let's see what happened on the board we have e4 and here Akiba Rubinstein uh, against the young opponent he don't play his traditional systems for example um, the French defense he went for Scandinavian defense um, not really the greatest of the openings however why not because if his opponent you know prepare against you then why not play something else we have e takes on d5 queen takes on d5 and now knight c3 attacking the queen queen a5 Bishop c4, developing the bishop, knight f6, d3, opening diagonal for another bishop, and now bishop g4, attacking the queen. Uh, we have knight e2, uh, blocking that, and now e6, also opening another diagonal, uh, and now bishop f4. So it looks like very, very harmonious. All the uh, minor pieces are, are going uh, pretty much, you know, easily on their positions. We have bishop d6, now challenging the bishop, and now queen d d2 defending the bishop and also unpinning um, the knight on e2 we have bishop e2 then knight e2 uh, queen takes on d2 and now bishop d2 so a lot of exchanges at the beginning uh, so Actually, a lot of players probably would say, okay, this is a draw that doesn't make sense to, to play anymore. But for Akiba Rubinstein, it just started. All the fun just starts. So we have knight b to d7 and now h3. We have castle, castle, both players castle on the queen side and now knight d5. So Akiba Rubinstein start to improve the position uh, of all his pieces. And as always, he does it very, very precise, improving position of every single piece, uh, while the opponent, you know, uh, can sometimes find the troubles uh, in finding the good moves. Here, Nimcovic went for d4, because um, what to do? Grabbing the, the, the space in the center, always good. However, now e4 is a bit weak. However, the bishop, for example, can uh, go back to d3. So that's the plan of Aaron. Nimcovic we have now knight 7 to the to the f6 and now bishop d3 as planned just to defend them the e4 now we have knight b4 trying to exchange one of the bishops as white has the pair of bishops so bishop go back to c4 uh, and now knight e4 jumping to this hole and attacking another bishop but also the pawn on f2. So we have bishop e1 defending and now knight d5. 
we have f3 kicking the knight and making a space for the bishop so the knight have to go back knight e to f6 and now bishop f2 for now the bishop is is pointing on the uh, on pawn so it's not that great however it's also the defender of that uh, centralized pawn we have rook d7 so preparing to uh, double the rooks on the on the d file as this is the the semi open file uh, and now we have c3 solidifying the position making you know very solid pawn chain uh, and now we have c6 so akiba rubinstein does the same uh, and also making a space for the kings so we have rook h to e1 getting the rook to the center to the semi open file and now knight h5 so what akiba rubinstein want to achieve is bring the knight to the f4 very nice outpost not the the greatest now but he slowly slowly improved the position of all the pieces and he just you know imagine where all the pieces should stay uh, just to be well coordinated we have king c2 king c7 and now a4 so aaron ninsovich start to attack the position of the king and we have a5 blocking that and now bishop go back to d3 another move with the bishop uh, we have h6 preparing g5 uh, and now rook a1 and i was trying to understand this move and probably the plan was to bring another rook to b1 uh, and then play b4 however is that possible akiba rubinstein um, answer with the rook d to d8 so definitely he sensed that something is going on so for example if aaron nimsovich followed that plan what could happen is for example uh, bring the knight to to f4 and after exchanging this bishop of course have to retreat to just defend the g2 um, and then let's say g5 and then b4 so what would happen we would have a takes on b4 c takes on b4 then maybe knight d5 uh, with the pressure on the b4 pawn b5 uh, and the game could continue this pair of bishops uh, looks like pretty interesting so this was possible however aaron nimsovich told that that's not enough so he played rook a to b1 another um, move with the rook we have g5 and um, akiba rubinstein starts to push on them on the queen side and now bishop c4 another move with the bishop rook d to e8 so also uh, rubinstein remaneuver his rooks as well what he could actually play is knight h to f4 uh, and after um, exchanging the, the knights he could try something like g takes on f4 open the g file and try to put the pressure on them on the g2 maybe that would be the the idea at least for the stockfish this is the best idea we have rook d to e8 and now how to continue b4 is not that great anymore because after exchanging the bishop and the knight actually defends b4 so uh, bishop d5 would have to be played that means uh, white uh, exchanged them the pair of bishops and it's not anymore the the asset of white in white position so e takes on d5 let's say c takes on b4 and the game could continue uh, for example rook e6 let's say b5 rook h to e8 and now uh, white can be even in some problems um king d2 then the knight is under attack and let's say bishop f4 with check so as you see this already is not that great black already have very nice outpost and very very active position so uh b4 was not that great now anymore probably g3 would have to be played g3 it doesn't look so uh, so attractive however for now uh the pawn is defended twice and also this knight uh, and another knight cannot jump to this very nice outpost on f4 however we have rook b to d1 so um, nimzovich thought okay it's not that dangerous as uh, as it is and here rubinstein again could go for the for the knight f4 however he prefers f5 first and uh, that's part of his plan and uh, nimzovich told okay the knight's gonna jump to to f4 so let's remaneuver this knight knight c1 and for example this knight can attack this pawn on a5 uh it's a it's a pretty good plan also the knight potentially uh could control a lot of dark squares in the center uh so rubinstein 
went for knight h to f4 uh, and now we have bishop f1 defending the pawn on g2 and now h5 so Rubinstein continue the pushing and now how to continue as white actually white has a pretty good move here knight b3 attacking this pawn and now after F um, b6 defending white actually has a very nice push watch at this c4 and after knight b4 king b1 how to continue if black doesn't care about king side at all and play something like g4 there is a huge problem c5 is coming and after b takes on c5 d takes on c5 bishop e7 this pawn of course can be taken but there is even stronger continuation bishop g3 now pinning the knight so bishop g5 uh, h4 bishop h6 and now f takes on g4 let's say h takes on g4 rook d6 and white has a really healthy and good position this pawn is still under attack if it's defended then actually uh white can pick up the the knight and then pick up this pawn and uh, with this passed pawn it should be pretty pretty interesting um to continue this game so definitely a good idea so g4 couldn't be played probably something like king b7 uh would be forced but still c5 is coming and after bishop c7 let's say c takes on b6 bishop takes on b6 and white has this pawn uh, on d4 isolated but at the same time this pawn is definitely a weakness so if white for example exchange them the knight this way uh then this pawn gonna become a huge problem for 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 black so this was the way to go knight b3 continue the plan aaron nimsovic play really nice you know started a really nice maneuver but now he decided to play g3 first and um, so he countered on the on the queen side we have knight g6 and and now bishop d3 so another move with the bishop as Aaron Nimsovich didn't want to you know keep the bishop on f1 uh, he wants to you know the bishop controls the, the some central squares uh, and now we have h4 this is the problem what to do with these pawns now Aaron Nimsovich decided that g4 um, should be played anyway this knight gonna gonna jump back so doesn't matter uh, even if he takes he would just you know open another file so that would be much better for Akiba Rubinstein uh, but now after pushing the pawn g pawn now we have knight g to f4 so again Akiba found the best spot for the for the knight again he attacks the the knight and again he attacks the pawn on h6 so we have bishop f1 again so fighting for uh, for the place for this bishop uh, and now we have rook at h to f8 really strong move by akiba rubinstein and now uh, why it's so strong because actually this is very very nice x-ray and um, on the f file so akiba rubinstein uh, anticipate that he's gonna open the f file and he gonna play on the f file now uh, how to continue if you play something like i don't know uh, you want to push c4 and you want to avoid any checks after and you play some natural move like king b1 there is the problem so i will show you that the threat f takes on g4 f takes on g4 and now knight h3 so you see that already black gonna have the protected past pawn a very huge asset and advantage uh, and now of course if the if the knight is taken this bishop is undefended so bishop h4 uh, and it looks like everything is fine however there is uh, one problem black actually can exchange the rook for two pieces rook f1 boom and now there is no attack on this on this knight anymore so rook f1 g takes on h4 and after i don't know delivering some checks that could be the the position where black has two pieces for the rook and this beautiful pass pawn should actually win the game so uh, definitely not this way the only move uh, is actually bishop g1 this bishop has to be moved from the f file very important move so bishop g1 is the way to go 
But this move has also one uh, maybe serious drawback because this diagonal is not protected anymore. So black can improve the position of the pieces as well. For example, knight g6 with the idea of bringing the, the bishop to the, to the g3. So for example, rook e2, bishop g3, and let's say c4, knight b4, king b1, let's say b6, solidifying the position, exchanging the knights. Uh, and then play something like knight f4. Uh, but after rook e to d2, uh, Stockfish actually says the position is completely equal and black has a very nice uh, pieces on the queen side. However, it's not so clear how to exploit that position. So uh, definitely white gonna have some counterplay in the right moment. Even d5 can be played and uh, it also can be, you know, double edge position if black tries to push too much. However, luckily for Akiba Rubinstein, Aaron Nimcovich found this, this continuation with the, with the knight on h3. However, he moved the bishop not to g1, he moved the bishop to e3 and that's the blunder and it actually blundered the game. So pause the video right now and find the winning continuation for black while I enjoy my cup of tea. So I already gave you the hints that Akiba brought the rook on the F file. So definitely something is going on on the F file. So one of the ideas is open the, the F file immediately. Uh, but what Akiba Rubinstein played was first uh, exchanging this bishop. So he didn't want, you know, to make it complicated. Like, for example, this bishop can, can exchange um, for the knight. So first he took the bishop uh, and now we have rook e3. Uh, we have knight d5 with the attack on the rook. And here is the culmination. This rook has to go somewhere. So if goes to the first rank, it cannot actually counter on the, on the f file because the bishop is there. So this unlucky bishop, which is forced to actually guard h3, now he is on this square. So here is the problem. So we have rook e2 trying to double the rook somewhere. It's a pretty logical move. But now we have f takes on g4, f takes on g4 and rook f3. Look at this. Akiba Rubinstein improved the position of the pieces here and there and also make the position of white pieces difficult to coordinate uh, and now we have a very serious threat the knight can uh, for example fork and the king and the and the rook and win the exchange so here is the problem and at the same time white actually cannot uh, control the f file so black has all the f file for 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 themselves uh, and now how to continue if you play something like rook d to e1 and you want to you know um, avoid any jumps the problem is bishop f4 and the knight d3 is coming anyway uh, so rook e6 doesn't work because simply uh, this bishop is hanging so black of course has uh, one extra minor piece so uh, definitely is a winning position and if bishop g2 trying to, for example to you know trap the rook which looks very very scary then still we have knight e3 with check uh, and now white are forced actually to give up the exchange and uh, and the rook gonna pick up that um, that rook and uh, and yeah white have uh, completely lost position uh, and if king b1 is played then simply knight g2 rook g2 rook h3 and this pawn uh past pawn of course protected past pawn gonna win the game so here is the problem also king b1 it looks like pretty logical doesn't really work a black gonna continue the advantage on the f file so rook e to f8 and after bishop g2 let's say rook g3 the problem is the knight gonna jump to f4 with the attack on the rook and on the bishop and this is gonna be double attack. So um, how to continue? If you play something like rook d2 d2 anticipating that the problem is knight f4 uh, is still coming and if you play king c2 let's say 
uh, then simply remove the defender of the on the H pawn and after um, taking by the rook then win this pawn and this of course is is winning uh, also if you try something else like let's say rook g1 uh, there is more tactical stuff here uh, knight f4 of course this can be taken also the same way uh, however there is even even more dangerous way let's say rook f2 and then knight h3 with the attack on both of the rooks and even if white um, exchange that uh, then after bishop f8 there is uh, still a problem the bishop is under attack if the bishop takes the, the takes the knight of course the rook is lost and so on so uh, this would just simply not work so bishop d5 would be would be forced but then again uh, e takes on d5 and now rook h1 just to defend this uh, this pawn but the pawn cannot be defended so look at this rook f to f3 rook e to h2 and now rook e3 and now this rook gonna come to, to f3 and the bishop of course gonna win the exchange so it's not even possible let's say knight b3 and as you see it's not possible so this way or another you cannot you know no just uh, save the exchange you're gonna lose the exchange or you're gonna lose this pawn and i'm not sure which is worse uh, probably losing this pawn is is much worse so uh, what happened in the game we have knight b3 by aaron nimsovic he said okay i, I give up the exchange uh, at least i'm gonna win the pawn on a5 we have knight e3 as planned and now uh, rook takes on e3 rook takes on e3 knight a5 as planned and now rook f8 so bringing another rook to the game we have knight c4 and now rook f2 with check now how to continue we have king b3 rook e to f3 now attacking the bishop and the problem is that the bishop doesn't have the way to go if the bishop moves to d3 i hope you see that already rook h3 simply winning this pawn in the game so uh, let's say bishop g3 uh, rook g3 bishop h5 saving that pawn uh, otherwise this pawn gonna be lost however h3 h2 and this pawn gonna be just a winner rook h1 uh, and h2 and then uh, rook g1 of course is winning the game so uh, this is why aaron nimcovic play knight d2 defending uh, for the second time the bishop but it's not enough rook d2 boom uh, exchanging the rook for two pieces and in this position aaron nimcovic resign he gonna lose uh, the bishop as well for the rook so uh, akiba rubinstein gonna have extra bishop and of course completely winning position so uh, that was first game I, I would like to show you from this ostende tournament I hope you enjoyed that and learned something new and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss uh, another stuff press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one